Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening and good night, everyone all over the world. Uh, today is the International Childhood Cancer Day. And today, all over the world, we are united for one purpose, to fight childhood cancer, to save one more life, and to unite for, against this catastrophic disease and to ease the pain for one more child. My name is Gevork Tamamian. I'm pediatric oncologist. I'm the head of Pediatric Cancer and Blood Disorder Center of Armenia, and I'm the editor-in-chief of OncoDaily. Um, now in Japan, it's um, 10 a.m. In Armenia, it's 5 a.m. and it's just getting the morning out. Europe and Africa are sleeping. In the United States, it's a daytime. But wherever we are, uh, we want, all of us, we want to conquer pediatric cancer. We have, all of us have different problems all over the world. And um, all the kids who are getting now diagnosed with cancers face different challenges. But one thing unites us and that all of us, we want kids to survive. Uh, and we are here to help each other. Today, due to advancements in the science and medicine, over the last, I would say, five decades, there was this huge advancement. And nowadays, in developed world, around 85% uh, around uh, of kids with cancer, they survive. But in developing world, the situation is different. And from zero up to 60% of kids can survive. Um, and, and, and today, when we, at the Onco Daily, when we were thinking to do this Oncoton, the global Oncoton, we was, were thinking on what to, on what to focus. Um, I was, uh, I was reading a book recently, and it was day, a saying that every day do something which you are afraid of. When we were starting this global Oncoton, uh, which is going to do uh, to be 24 hours and it's going to be live streamed nowadays on social media uh, all over the world and um, we were thinking on what to focus and uh, around around i'm going to tell you a short story around eight months ago we we decided to start start this onco daily a global platform which would become a voice of oncology and would be accessible for everyone all over the globe. At that time, we thought it's going to be challenging, but we did it, and uh, and it really became one of the major outlets. And while I was interviewing an incredible woman, Dean Crow, the president of Raleigh Foundation, she suggested me to contact and to interview two amazing people uh, who were behind the Onco Heroes Biosciences, a drug developing company. Who is, which is dedicated exclusively to pediatric cancer drug development. So they are 100% focused on pediatric cancer development. While I was talking about this challenging, the challenges between the developed and developing world uh, that people are facing, but one thing I think also is common that uh, pediatric drugs uh, are not uh, developed so uh, intensively as it is done in adult cancers. So there we have a challenge. That's why we thought, I mean, we, we, uh, we certainly should interview them. And while we were talking with them, we said, let's do the Global Oncoton dedicated to, uh, to this cause, to the idea that we should support the pediatric cancer drug development. And this uh, great company established by two parents, um, we thought it's it's going to be really the the case where we should support their work and just in the video you saw about what about the work they uh, they were doing. Uh, so we at this time also we were not afraid to to do this. Uh, I mean we were afraid certainly that it's going to be global. It's going to be I mean how we are going to make it, and we were afraid of doing this, but. 
we said, as, as I said in the week, it's written every day do something which we are afraid of. So we were afraid of that it's going to be difficult, but we did it and we started it. And the global oncotone now is a reality. Uh, to, today we will be hosting around 100 people from all over the world. We will be hosting uh, renowned oncologists, oncologists from different countries who will share their problems uh, and ideas from different settings. We will be hosting um, amazing survivors and their uh, very strong families who will share their stories. We will share. Uh, we will host here uh, international organizations and uh, com uh, or, uh, companies and foundations uh, who will uh, talk about their inspiring work and in uh, different areas of pediatric cancer and in different geographic locations. Uh, so that's going to be for, as I mentioned, that's going to be for 24 hours. So. Please be with us. Uh, today's our goal, as I mentioned, I mean, and the, from the name, it's visible that the Oncotone is uh, not just um, raising awareness, which is the most important part of this event, but also we are going to raise funds to support the great work the Onco Heroes is doing and uh, they, uh, the founders and uh, the scientists doctors involved in the work we'll talk about this later uh, and to start uh, to, to start the oncotone i will make a challenge uh, and i think it's i hope it's gonna uh, be viral also for the other countries uh, so our armenian team decided to uh, to start the oncotone and um, uh, with uh, the with the small donation i would say um with our Armenian drum, one million Armenian drum, we will uh, we will donate for the Oncotone, and I hope uh, that this will be viral, as I mentioned, and other countries with their own currencies will be able to raise at least a million uh, with their currencies. So let the on global first global Oncotone begin. Uh, God with us, and I'm sure by the end of the day will be have, uh, having a huge success uh, and without further ado i'm going to invite two incredible people here uh, ricardo garcia uh, amazing person who is behind the this great initiative onco heroes biosciences and uh, Ricardo uh, originally is from Spain, currently is living in the United States. He is, uh, he is the dedicated father of Richie, first of all, and who is a brave medulloblastoma survivor. And alongside with him, we have Fernando Goldstein from Brazil, father of Federico, a resilient fighter, currently uh, battling relapsed medulloblastoma. Uh, and together they will share their unique insights and experiences in caring for a child with cancer, offering a deep dive into realities, challenges, and triumphs that come with this launching role. Welcome to the first global Oncotone. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Gevor. Uh, good night, Fernando. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending the Oncothon. Uh, this is very exciting, as you can imagine, for a lot of people, especially for me and for everyone in Oncothon here. So we, we really want to take this opportunity to thank you so much, um, Onco Daily and Gevor and everyone in your team for putting this in such a short period of time. And thank you so much for your first contribution. This is really exciting. Um, Fernando, I can't wait to hear uh, more about yourself and your story. Well, uh, thank you. I'm honored to, to be here. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Givor. Uh, as as Givor mentioned, my son is battling against uh, medulloblastoma. He has a relapsed medulloblastoma. We have been uh, fighting for eight years already. And uh, we, uh, as many of people from our audience might know uh, uh, relapsed medulloblastoma today in the world is like a dead sentence. So the survival rate is 
practically zero. And uh, two years and a half ago, we start doing something, as a Gevoir mentioned as well, and Ricardo in the video, uh, there is no treatments uh, enough for kids. So we start uh, initiative that are developing new treatments for, uh, for relapsed medulloblastoma. And by coincidence, uh, uh, or uh, we 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 just uh, we just uh, made made the protocol in the FDA of of our two uh, new uh, treat immunotherapy treatment specific for metolobastoma. Well, so I think I would love to hear more more information about this. So well. I, I don't I don't want to just uh, spend some more time about myself. So you you mentioned Gevor, I moved to Boston. Well, I'm coming from another world. I'm I'm originally my background is IT. I've been working on building companies on the IT sector for many years. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I set up my own company when I was really really young. I was a teenager indeed. Um, and then when I was launching a, uh, I'm originally from Spain, as everybody can notice in my accent. Um, um, my son was diagnosed in two, 2011 uh, with a high risk medulloblastoma. We were living in Spain, and then after three months there, uh, things were getting very, very complicated. So uh, prognosis was very bad, and we decided to go for hope something, something, somewhere else. Sorry, and we were looking for an, a group of experts. So we've got the opportunity to connect with um, a great team at the Harvard Cancer Institute in. In, in Boston, and they um, they um, encourage us to to come uh, to the U.S. so that Richie could get um, another approach, another type of treatment. So we did it. Um, we came to the U.S. with um, luggage and my son, my wife, my daughter, myself. Uh, we didn't know what was going what what was going to happen, and with a lot of hope. And, and here we are, you know, some years later, we're still in Boston. We decided to um, remain here, um, which is a teenager, 18 years old boy. But probably, by the way, it's going to be the next uh, speaker in the next session. So I'm very excited. And, and yet, yeah, life is not easy for uh, patients and survivors, um, as probably Fernanda, you know. Um, and that was kind of more or less the um, the inspiration for me to move forward and 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 declare war to, to pediatric cancer. I said about a foundation. This is the first thing I did it. Um, the Richie Cancer Foundation and a lot about the needs of developing new drugs. And I didn't know anything about uh, pediatric cancer. I didn't know that by then only four drugs are approved uh, specifically for pediatric cancer in two twelve. And, and that traumatized me, you know, it was, uh, I couldn't believe it. So I, I had a lot of opportunities to speak with a lot of people. And I met with uh, pharma industries. I met with uh, pediatric oncologists, all the parents, foundations, um, um, everywhere. I was everywhere talking to everyone, trying to understand why there were only four drugs approved specifically for pediatric cancer. And then I realized that we're just treating kids today still with drugs that were developed more than 10, 20 years ago. And, and in some cases, you know, those drugs were developed for adult indication, and, and the only thing we're doing is adjusting the doses. And I didn't know that in some cases, 50% of the kids are diagnosed with cancer are in trials because there's no other option for them. And then it was very, very traumatic to hear that there were no one uh, from the industry interested in to move forward the needle and develop new drugs for pediatric cancer. And and then it was that was kind of just a, the decision point and then i thought we need to do something else we need to set up a um, um an entity we need to just be and we need to just take some kind of leadership from the industry side so i think uh, i wish there will be more um companies out there um interested in developing drugs for pediatric cancer we will need more 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 than just one only focus on this uh, thank you, thank you, Ricardo and Fernando, for for your uh, for your stories and for your initiatives and that that um, you found the strength um, to continue your battle in this field as well. And uh, Ricardo launched the the foundation and the biotech, and Fernando the initiative. Um, what are the challenges you are you are facing daily? The like most significant one, the challenges uh, regarding your initiatives. 
right now, which you would like to mention. Uh, may, may I, Ricardo? Yeah, yeah, yes. of course, you know, all yours. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate uh, Ricardo and Onco Eros, uh, really the, the, the job they are doing, the, it's, it's wonderful. But uh, uh, we, we, we kind of uh, made the same path, Ricardo, by coincidence, because I am in Brazil, and when my son was diagnosed, I, 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 I flew to Boston, and I treat him in, in Boston. But then I, I didn't stay in Brazil. I moved back to, uh, I didn't stay in Boston, I moved back to Brazil. When my son relapsed and, and I said that this is, this is a terrible for a, for a, for a medulloblastoma, uh, I, I knew uh, that, that, that something, something else must be done because there were, there were, there is no treatment available for a relapsed medulloblastoma. And then we started to talk with some doctors and I started with a, with a small, with a, with a donation. And, and I was very impacted what, what, uh, what the, not, a, not a big amount of money can do for uh, pediatric uh, cancers because for example, just to give an example, the treatment that my son and the Ricardo's son did uh, and the kids are doing today in all over the world, th this treatment is from the 80s, from the late 80s. So it's, it's a very toxic treatment. Uh, it's, uh, and and, and many, many children perish, they don't survive. So that's why I, I started to uh, this initiative and and we are we are progressing very well and i think the main challenge is always funds so we are we are always uh, uh, trying to raise funds to fund the the clinical trials exactly what onco is is doing with this event yeah i would say i, I think i echo your words um well the main challenge is money it's funding um and this is precisely what we are doing things like uh, Oncothon and some other initiatives that we're just taking. And um, because, well, at the end of the day, what is very frustrating is to see that, um, you know, you could really advance development of drugs for pediatric cancer with a tiny fraction of what the money is required for adult indication. And, and this is the worst part, right? So in our case, um, we managed to build a portfolio with three clinic ready compounds. Um, to, with the potential to treat up to a different type of pediatric cancer, okay? We raised less than $13 million uh, to build this portfolio. So I don't think there is a way that a company uh, developing drugs for adult indication could build a portfolio with three clinic-ready drugs with less than, I don't know, maybe yeah. dozens of millions of dollars, right? So I, I think this is, this is one of the main messages I want to just send to the audience. Um, I mean, it's not really so expensive to develop drugs for pediatric cancer. In fact, it's very efficient. Um, but um, unfortunately, um, there is no way to, yeah, that, that's kind of more or less one of the main challenges. Um, so I think providing more funds for, um, for developing drugs for pediatric cancer. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, one thing I think I mean, at least my suggestion would be to also focus on, uh, it, it's not just in my opinion about the, the money, but rather, I mean, there are a lot of money all over the world and pediatric cancer is one of the, one of the things, I mean, as like pediatric cancer field, which is close to people's heart. I think one thing is we're lacking is this public awareness. So, if we are able to raise awareness and to be persistent in our goals and to keep the, uh, the, the positive view that we are certainly going to get there and about today's Onkoton also, I'm, I'm very positive that by the end of the day, we are going to have a huge success. So, I think if we like combine these three Ps, like uh, public awareness, persistence and positivity that we are going to get it there, um, I'm sure we'll have a success. Um, uh, 
I know it's like, and from your point of view, we need to be very fast. We cannot wait because ch children cannot wait. That's the most important. That's why I think every day uh, we, we need to push much forward this initiative. And really, thank you so much for, for, um, for, uh, for your uh, initiatives, for your strengths and um, for pushing this forward every day. I, I mean, you, you were very humble on sharing the very small challenges, I'm sure. Because besides battling the cancer, you are fighting uh, the energy in yourself to do these great things for the other kids. The drugs which are going to develop, uh, they are going to be for everyone. Yes. In developed or developing world. It, it doesn't matter where the kids live. Of course, there are different realities and some kids might have access, some not. We will talk about this later. But when, when you get the things done, when you bring more drugs, which are much better, which uh, certainly our kids deserve better treatments. Certainly we need to we need to um, we need to have much better things what we have now, and yes, as it was mentioned at the bottom, in honor of Ali and other fighters and other heroes, we need to continue this fight and we need to get there. Just uh, quickly, I would like to ask you also to share some of your personal story uh, from your personal stories. Um, which, I mean, uh, which you would like to share today? I mean, just uh, some small moments uh, from from your, uh, this journey against cancer. Well, Fernando, you want to go first? No, you, you can go, Rich. Well, I would say, I, I would, I would, I could write a, a book, to be honest. Uh, so I would love to share a lot of advices to everyone that is watching us right now. But I would say one of the most important ones is just enjoy, uh, you know, the moment, right? Because things can change uh, in one second, as it happens to me, to Fernando, to many other parents out there. We had, probably Fernando, you had a normal life, right? You had your family, you had your work, your projects, your future, your dreams. And all of a sudden, you know, you was told that, okay, your son has had one of the most aggressive brain cancer. Um, so, uh, we were never prepared for where we were going to be living, uh, which is worse than going to hell, I can tell you. So my my message is um, really, you know, enjoy the moment, um, take a distance from everything that is happening every day because, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of dads and moms and there's a lot of kids battling for their life. And this is really serious, right? So, um, and especially if you can, of course, for the ones that are listening today, get educated on the truth uh, about child cancer and the challenges. Um, and then by knowing everything that you're gonna learn probably with the sessions, you realize that uh, we can really move forward uh, the needle and develop new drugs uh, if we're working together. So that kind of more or less my, my message. Yeah, I think I, think I, I can make my, uh, your words, my words, um, uh, Richie. Uh, I, I think I'm thinking really in writing a book because it's it's un un unspeakable what we we go through or with or uh, what we have been going through in the last eight years uh, with our son. So it's. Uh, but I, I give a message. I will give a, a message. Your message was more general to enjoy life because bad things can happen. I, I will narrow down a little bit my message and I, I, I will try to pass a message for the parents that have kids with, with cancer. I think we, we can never give up. I think we have to fight. We have to try to find solutions. Uh, we have to have second opinions. We have to inform our, ourselves and we have to, to fight. And of course, we have to to be positive also. Uh, we have to, positiveness is, is a very important thing. I am a cancer survivor myself. I have a, a sarcoma uh, 20 years ago, and now I'm facing this with my, my kid, which is more, most, much worse than, than having cancer, that 
that what happened to me with my kid is much worse, of course, because uh, I mean, I could switch place with him, of course. Uh, I think every father would do that. Mm. But I think we, we have to fight. And we, we didn't have uh, the, medic the, medicine, uh, the, the medicine didn't offer us a solution for, for Federico. And then we, we are trying to find, we are trying to move the needle as we speak, as you said, uh, Ricardo. And, and of course, we are going to, to help Federico and thousands of other kids around the world. Thank you so much, uh, Ricardo and Federico. Thank you very much, uh, as I mentioned, first of all, for, for your great strengths, for pushing the things forward for everyone, for your fight. Um, and uh, as we started today, the International Childhood Cancer Day by uh, this great initiative by the Global Oncoton to support this wonderful uh, wonderful organization and its mission, Uncle Heroes Biosciences. Uh, let's also honor all the people right now who are, uh, as Federico mentioned, all the little uh, heroes who are in the fight right now, their families. Let's honor today uh, all the healthcare professionals all over the world, um, starting from uh, China, Japan, ending up in the San Francisco, um, the, uh, on the other side of the of the world. Uh, so uh, this is this is a huge fight, and we need to be united, all of us, against against this catastrophic disease. And I'm again very positive. By the end of the day, we'll have a huge success, and let's do it all together. And again, uh, I would like to challenge the people from all over the world to donate and to join our global Oncoton. Uh, and I hope from every country we will raise at least a million in, with their currencies. Uh, I'm sure some country, in some countries this is going to be a small amount, some countries big. But if the countries, uh, for these countries, it's a big amount, it means these countries have enough means. So. That's why I think it's a, it's a fair distribution. If we, from every country, we are able to uh, raise at least a million with their currencies. Let's, let's do it and uh, let's continue our fight and let's continue our global Oncoton. Thank you very much again and uh, God with us. Thank you. Thank you.